I wish I had known sooner that I was living with mental illness. And I also wish that I had someone to talk to about it that had maybe gone through the same thing or had known someone that was going through the same thing. I also wish that there was more education, both in my school and in my family life, about what mental illness is. I don't think that I ever had any education or knowledge about that, and I really wish that I had. Hi, my name is Claudette Pombo. I have been diagnosed with bipolar 1 disorder, post-traumatic stress disorder, general anxiety disorder, and obsessive compulsive disorder. So it's 2015 and I'm on my way to my circus themed wedding. Yes, that's right. I'm having a circus themed wedding. We've gone all out. We've got stilt walkers. We've got tightrope walkers. We've got aerialists. We literally have gone all out. So naturally, I'm very excited. So I've got to make my way from Philadelphia to San Francisco. So I go to the airport, super pumped, and I walk up to the security uh, agent and I say, hey, how's it going? Uh, I'm on my way to my wedding, I'm so excited. And he says, that's great, congratulations, that's so exciting. Um, can I please see your boarding pass? And I say, no, um, I think that my partner has left it with one of you guys. So if you could just like uh, call someone and, and check if anyone has my boarding pass. And he's like, okay. So he like radios uh, some other people and I'm waiting. And about two minutes later, I am surrounded by three police officers. And at the time, I'm a little bit confused. I'm not scared because I know that I haven't done anything wrong. Just a little bit confused. And I just think that they're here to help me find my boarding pass. And they say, ma'am, please follow us up to the security office. So I say, absolutely. So I follow them up to the security office, we go up some stairs and then they sit me down in a room with another police officer. They close the door and um, she starts asking me some questions. So she starts asking me very basic questions. What's your name? I tell her my name. What's your date of birth? I tell her my date of birth. Uh, where do you live? I give her that. And then she asks me a question which takes me by surprise. She says, is there any reason for you to believe that there would be a missing persons report filed for you? And I'm like, no, I'm not missing. I'm in front of you. Like everyone knows where I am. I'm going to my wedding. They're all going to be there. And um, she says, well, that's strange because I have a missing persons report filed for you. You've been missing for the last five days and no one has been able to get a hold of you. And at that moment, I realized that my reality and her reality were two very, very different things and that my reality was not real. And zooming out, I mean, I didn't know it at the time, but I now know that what I was experiencing was a fully blown manic episode with uh, psychosis. So my circus themed wedding was actually a delusion. <laughs> It wasn't a real thing. It was a delusion that I was having. Um, and it's funny to think that deep down inside, I want a circus themed wedding. <laughs> I was then transported to a hospital where I was held for 10 days. Um, and in those 10 days, I think I achieved more than any person has ever achieved in their life. Um, I was nominated for a Nobel Peace Prize. I met with uh, Oprah Winfrey. I met Barack Obama. I started a company with Steve Jobs. We developed an app together. Um, I also learned how to shapeshift. If you want some tips on shapeshifting, it's really easy. All you need is a mirror. Um, I was also Avril Lavigne for like two hours. <laughs> so it was a wild experience. Obviously, all of those were delusions, hallucinations. Um, but they were very real to me at the time. Got to pause and just say something really quickly. I think the way that I kind of deal with the trauma of going through that, and it was very traumatic, is by shedding some light on it. But these experiences are not uh, very fun to go through. So I think that's an important disclaimer to have. I was released from hospital uh, and put on just a short term medication which was able to take me out of my mania and my psychosis and after that I tried to continue living my life the way I had before just thinking like oh that was a weird experience that everyone goes through everyone has a mental breakdown and that's fine I can just move on and you know within six months I realized that I couldn't I was 
I couldn't work, I couldn't really function on a day-to-day -day basis. I kept experiencing these symptoms, uh, which made it very difficult for me to, to function. And I kind of got desperate and I eventually and reluctantly went into therapy um, just to get some help. And it took me about a year's worth of therapy sessions going every single week to be okay with my diagnoses of bipolar 1 disorder, PTSD, OCD, and then general anxiety. And I think the one that was the hardest for me was bipolar 1 disorder. I found NAMI through my therapist when I was learning how to deal with my diagnosis. She had suggested that I meet up with an advocate from NAMI who is a very successful lawyer. She did um, uh, storytelling for NAMI and she was actually invited into one of my therapy sessions to talk about her illness and how she lives and copes with it. And she showed me that, oh, you know, you can live a fulfilled, successful life and have these mental illness diagnoses. So um, I saw her and it kind of took the fear out of that and the stigma away. And I was eventually able to uh, come to terms with that. Fast forward down the road, I also went on the medication route, which was the route uh, that was great for me, even though there's also a lot of stigma around medication. Um, and I was able to find something that worked for me. And now, fast forward five years, um, my life is wonderful, very blessed and grateful to have um, a very fulfilled life. I have a great career. I have a very supportive partner. We're getting married next year. And no, it's not going to be a circus themed <laughs> wedding. Um, and yeah, I'm very, very grateful to have found um, NAMI and to have had them part of my recovery. I hope that by sharing my story, it shed some light and love on mental illness. Thank you everyone for listening to my story. So great to be here and very excited to walk for mental illness. I walk to end stigma by shedding light on my journey and sharing my story at NAMI Walks and by connecting with the people that attend NAMI Walks and having them open up to me about their stories just as I've opened up to them about mine. And that is a really touching and inspiring thing to be able to connect with people about their journeys and see if you're able to provide any help or you know, an ear to listen on as someone who's gone through something similar. I think it's a really special thing. I hope that by hearing the story, uh, you or a loved one feel less fear about finding help or talking about it, um, and that you're able to, to find some hope. NAMI is such an important uh, organization for those uh, looking for some help or resources and who are going through a hard time. The NAMI community and NAMI has been a continuing part of my recovery, uh, has continued to show support and love uh, throughout uh, my journey. And I'm so grateful to everyone on the NAMI team and to have this extended part of uh, my family. Uh, and I think that's also very important is to have a support network. And that's what NAMI is to me.